continue with the story of linear approximations. This is going to be a little bit of a modification of problem number 12. And what we start with is f of x equals tan x. That's a function that is moderately complicated. If you had to calculate um, almost any random value of this by hand, it would be really hard. We really don't know how to do that. We trust our calculators for that. And it'll be nice to get at least some sort of approximation for this um, that we can uh, manage by hand. So remember the procedure. We're going to try and replace this with its linear approximation. Oh, and we need to say where we're going to approximate it. Well, that's sort of our choice. It depends on exactly what kinds of values we want. Well, we're going to pick the simplest point, which is a equals 0. And that's going to be definitely, we'll see, it's a definitely a simple point. follows the criterion for um, the simple base point that we talked about in the previous video. And we're going to be able to get this linear approximation. So we've got our, in our ingredients. We've got our function. We've got our base point. And then we're going to get our general formula. And then whatever x we care about that's near a, we would be able to plug that in. And we're going to then do something a little more interesting with this, but testing how good this approximation is. So always the first thing to do is take the derivative, secant squared x. And then we're just going to plug in our special base point value into the function. And tan 0 is 0. The slope corresponding to angle 0 is 0. And secant squared of 0, well, that's 1 over cosine squared. And so that's 1. And so we get a very simple approximation. Remember, our general formula is the linear approximation is whatever that uh, value is of the function at a plus whatever the derivative is times x minus a. And remember, this is a number always. This is a number always. This is a number. The only variable in here is x. And I just get 0 plus 1 times x minus 0 equals x. So there's our linear approximation. Or in other words, tan x is approximately equal to x itself for x near 0, or another way to say that is small x. That is a super handy thing to know. The way I like to say it is if you ever want, if you have an engineer building something for you, building a bridge or a rocket or something, ask them to say, what is tan x for small x, approximately? If they don't say x back within half a second, fire them, please. Really a crucial thing for anybody working and getting an understanding of functions. So, but I want to make a comment about approximation. That's a little bit glib to say, oh, they just say spit, out at, spit back x, and that means they're a good engineer, although I didn't say it exactly that way. Whenever you have this, these two wiggly lines, something is approximately equal to something else. That really doesn't mean anything, because I'm not telling you how good an approximation. I'm not. First of all, I'm not saying what small x means. That's pretty vague. And I'm not saying, given a small x, how good is this approximation? Does this mean if x is one one millionth, this is good to two decimal places? Or does this mean when x is one one tenth, this is good to five decimal places? It's really something pretty vague. Now to Analyze that from scratch is pretty darn hard, but at least, but here's a good place for for the calculator to get an idea of just how um, how good this approximation is. So what we want to do, I'm going to sketch this by hand, and then I'll show you how the calculator deals with it. So here's what the tangent graph looks like, and here's our linear approximation. It's just the tangent line as always. And we can see that, as expected, it gets it's very close. It's hard to tell the difference between these two graphs at the start. And then the real graph, the actual values of tangent, diverge away from the tangent line. And of course, in the case of tangent, because it has a vertical asymptote here at pi over 2, it's going to get an, become an infinitely bad approximation. Because this guy says, oh, this value is pi over 2. And the actual answer is going to infinity. But hopefully, in some region in here, it's going to be pretty good. So here's one way to, to test that. What we can do is we can compare. We say, what about tan x? And we subtract x. And we say, how big is this? And when you're asking how big a number is, it's really about the absolute value. Okay. And so we'd like to know, when is the, the size of tan x minus x smaller than some, let's say, some predetermined error estimate? So let's pick, start out, let's pick an error bound 
of, let's say, 0.5. I think that's what I'm going to use to start with. Yeah, okay. And so that means I'm going to allow tan x minus x to be up to and including 0.5 in size. So I want to know where that's satisfied. And that's not something we can solve analytically. But it's something we can look at the calculator for. Well, how do you deal with inequalities and absolute values? First of all, we could turn it into an equality. That's going to be the boundary of the region. It's pretty clearly there's some region in here in the x values where that kind of thing's going to be true. And we can look just at the boundary. Then it's going to be anything between the boundary points. And remember, an equation with absolute values turns into something with plus or minus on the other side. It's when the, the difference is either plus or minus 0.5. Either I'm too low or too high by exactly 0.5. That's what I want to focus on. And in fact, one way to do that is move it over. One way to, good way to graph it is to take the actual curve, tan x, and then I'm going to shift it up or down by 0.5. And then I'm going to see where that intersects my, uh, my tangent line. So I'm going to shift this guy up and down, and I'm looking for these two intersections. Because that's where I've deviated, my approximation is deviated by my error bound, which is this size. This is where it's too high. This is where it's the same amount too low. And so this distance here and this distance here, that's my 0.5, my error bound. And I'll do 0.5, and then if I have time, I'll do 0.1, which is actually what's asked for in the book. It's not qualitatively different, though. OK, let's see if we can do that on the calculator and make it show up on the picture. I think if it rescales the brightness, it works better. OK. It's going to be a little dim, certainly. OK. I think you can see that. We'll see what it looks like on YouTube, though. So right now I'm plotting tan x and x. And the window I've got is minus 1.5 to 1.5 and minus 2 to 2 in y. That's a good window for the, the central part of tangent. And here's what the graph looks like. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, it's looking OK. There's tangent, and there's its tangent line, the straight line that approximates it pretty well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go now, and I'm going to activate these plots. I've gotten these ready already. 10 plus 0.5 and 10 minus 0.5. And that puts this bo these bounds um, on either side of it. I bet if I had something dark to put on either side of the, if I had this a, a dark surface to put this on, it would be really useful. But I don't know if I have that. Hmm. This is an experiment. Let's put it on this. Okay, I want to get some glare out of the the light, but eh, that kind of looks better, doesn't it? And it. It highlights the notices of the American Mathematical Society, which is always great. OK, so we're looking for where these intersections are. And if we want to figure those out, well, the calculator has a, has a device for that. So we go second calc, intersect. It asks us for the first curve. We don't want to intersect tan x. That's not one of our curves. So we do up arrow, tan x minus 0.5. Yes, we want to intersect that one. That's this low one. And then not with tan x, but with x. So we're intersecting one of the shifted tans with x. And the guess, I don't want to guess 0, because that's right in the middle. I want to guess over here. And it tells us that x is 0.975. OK. So at x is 0.975, just about almost to 1, I'm still within 1 half. Now, you could get the other intersection. It's going to be, in this case, it's going to be symmetrical over here at minus 0.975. But in general, you can take your tangent line and intersect it with the two shifted versions of your curve. Now, to get the, more, the book's version, you'd change it to 0.1. And you'd get a much tighter fit with the graph. And then you'd, but you'd still do the intersection. You probably want to zoom in on this one to see it better. But that's a good place to stop. You can try that on your own.